Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 224. Dos, dos, cuatro. Dos, dos, cuatro. How you doing? How you feeling? Motherfuckers. Welcome back to the show. I don't know why, but it's turning into a bit of a one week um, episode. It's turning into a one episode a week show, which is not why I really intended. So I apologize to those of you that I have promised to do more shows. Um, but you know how these things are. Sometimes you get busy and things happen and you don't end up doing the things that you say you're going to do. And But for me personally, it's kind of a bit of a fail. I try and pride myself on being a little bit different than others. I pride myself on being a man of my word. I pride myself on doing things just outside of the norm. You know what? Outside the norm so much so that this bloody window with this noise is getting on my nerves. So I'm going to actually close it before we continue. And then we can get into this one because we know because this is too loud, isn't it? Right? Yeah. All right. So hopefully that should work, and the sound should be back where it is. Right? Can you hear that? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me loud and clear? Might check one two. Might check one two. Okay. So as I said. Um, I'm a bit disappointed because, um, you know, I haven't been a man of my word and I've kind of messed up in my upload dates and stuff. But hopefully, fingers crossed, this week is different than the other weeks, I promise. But hey, one episode a week is better than no episodes a week, isn't it? Right? This free podcast that um, you're all listening to has coming at you live and direct for somewhere in East London. One is better than none. One is better than none. So, how have I been, you ask? Oh, thankfully, finally, someone's asking me how I've been. I've been pretty well, you know, I've been pretty good. I've been training a lot. I've been running well. I've been keeping myself quite strong with press ups and sit ups and stuff. I've been doing loads of sprint workouts that I usually do in the park or around the corner from where I live. So that's been pretty decent. Haven't been going out as much as I probably had wanted to or have wanted to, but you know, that's probably a good thing in the long run. Um, DJing, not so much the last couple of weeks. I've been a bit quiet with the Bank Holiday weekend. But prior to that, I had a bit of a crazy one with, you know, playing at, you know, three different locations under one kind of management company and then this weekend i'm back again at westfield stratford for another night of tapped so if you're in the area from friday from 5 until 11 myself and afro musa playing at tapis for a night called tapped so that's coming out every month now for the most part or the end of the month um so that should be a good one because you know we haven't been in a while so i've got loads of stuff i want to play so that should be nice and good fun times apart from that it's been about it right so i'm going to berlin soon um, for my guys and girls out there who have heard this podcast um, a few times, you'll know that I have a, a very deep and spiritual connection with the place called Berlin, located in Germany. I'm going there at the beginning of October, I think from like the 4th until the 7th, like a Thursday to the Monday or Friday to the Monday. I'm not too sure on what date I'll get, but I booked basically some time off, so that's, that's all done. I'm just going to book my tickets. I'm not sure if I want to go. I'm not sure if I want to do the Thursday after work, arrive at like 10 then get into my you know airbnb or hostel or whatever at 11 or 11 12 then be able to like kind of go out that first night um get waved and then maybe um do that or should i yeah do i pay for a night in a place after tw- after 12 or do i just go i'm not too sure really what's the best option i could just i can just hop out straight from the airport after work go out rave um, stay out and then get somewhere to sleep or go to meet my host at the Airbnb that I'm going to go rent um, in the morning at 9am or something, right? That might be a best way to go do it. Um, so so kind of have like a free night outside in Berlin, just hanging out, being a bit of a lad, right? That might be a good way to go. I don't know. Let's see. I'll figure it out. But yeah, I'm going, I'm going to Berlin. I'm really looking forward to that. Obviously, I'm going to spend the most of my Saturday through Sunday to Monday in the Bergheim. That's, that's the plan. Probably going to arrive at the Bergheim maybe Saturday afternoon, maybe Saturday evening or Sunday. No, actually Sunday morning is the best time to go, isn't it, right? I'll probably go Sunday morning and then stay there until Monday morning. And that should be a good little time for me to have a good little boogie. And I think going forward, I might do that quite often. I might just suck off some evenings or some nights in london and just do those kind of like weekend trips to berlin and just get waved there or go to amsterdam and go to the school or something like that that might be a better way to come and spend my kind of time and whatnot but yeah those are my plans for the next couple of weeks and then what halloween's popping up not really plans for that um 
and then New Year's Eve and stuff, you know. But that's always a bit of a letdown. So that's probably it for now. Um, so yeah, but we ain't got much time. So let's get right into the topics. I've got a lot of topics I need to speak about. Things that I thought were quite interesting. Let's put the camera over here. Um, let's see what we have on the old list of topics. Bapidi bapidi bum. Number one, we have Jay Z in the NFL doing. This is old news. I'm sure to most of you guys out there, but um, yeah, it's a bit cons- it's a bit confusing this whole Jay Z and NFL deal. Now again, I'm I think the whole racial tension thing, or you know, the the issue of police brutality in the US is something that I know has been spoken about ad nauseum for the most part, but it's still an issue that's very permeant within the minds of loads of probably black entertainers in the US because I guess with the NFL being predominantly a black, you know, sport for the most part, you know, it's represented by a lot of black people in there. There's a lot of power, a lot of influence, a lot of money that they're driving into that uh, franchise or into that sports organization, whatever you may call it, into that league, which then is making them big bucks. To feel as if like they're powerless to enact any sort of change must be a bit hard to take. So I understand in the entertainment side of things where they need to kind of, you know, um, let's say they need to uh, put their foot down in some way, shape or form or have some way, shape or form of protesting and showing their kind of discontent, right? Showing how unhappy they are with the current state of affairs. So I guess when Colin Kaepernick finally took that knee and decided to kind of take a stand, everyone sort of rallied behind him because they're like, okay, cool. We don't have influence maybe where it matters in the courts and the judicial system and the police force and stuff. But what we can do is maybe bring awareness to this issue and then maybe hopefully with that awareness, you're able to kind of curtail it into some real action. But, you know, unfortunately in life, I think as I've learned, as I think most people have learned, the older you get, you can't really control how people interpret what you do, right? Or you can't really control people's reaction to what you do. So as um, pure and as well-intentioned, Colin Kaepernick's um, protest was and sometimes you know maybe it might have not been the most purest thing in the world maybe it might be quite self-serving right maybe he was a player that was on the wane who was kind of recognizing on and was um, able to recognize that and in this really hyper aware personal brand era he wanted to kind of you know change his trajectory and sort of position himself as a sort of like freedom fighter right there's, there is that kind of thinking behind it I understand that but let's say let's give him the benefit of that let's say he was have he went into pure intentions right he tried to do well. He tried to do the right thing. But unfortunately, he couldn't control the reaction of the others. So um, the police force, the army, for the most part, right? Mostly the army and the police force kind of took his not um, standing for the national anthem and kneeling instead as disrespect. Because I think, first of all, he started off sitting down, didn't he, right? Then he spoke to a former vet. Um, he had a kind of consultation with him. A former vet kind of pulled him to one side. Something you don't really hear of too often, right? I don't think we even got the former vet on TV. I'm not too sure if he even appeared on video. But we always get a lot of um, haranguing or hand wringing or a lot of uh, uh, telling off in public, right? We don't really get a lot of adults in entertainment actually pulling each other to one side outside of the limelight, away from the cameras, away from TMZ and just kind of giving uh, their friend, um, their comrade, uh, somebody within the, you know, there's in the same sphere as them, some kind of heartfelt advice that hasn't got any sort of tinge of self-righteousness. It doesn't really happen too often. Everything's always to the public, right? So this soldier does the great thing and sort of like points one side and says, hey, you sitting down is not a good way to go about things. You should just kneel instead, right? That's that's respectful. So he starts to kneel. And still the conversation does the still the conversation gets completely derailed by this idea that he's disrespecting the flag. Look at what they've given him. Um, it's a privilege thing. You've got people like Jason Whitlock coming after his neck, you've got guys on Fox, like people just got, you know, completely destroying him. And so much so, it got to a point where the NFL, who are notoriously um coy and notoriously afraid of getting involved in any sort of like drama i think if you've been following the nfl just from i don't follow the nfl in terms of a sport i just follow it in terms of just kind of like you know the business of it and if you've seen any kind of player get in trouble for a dui domestic abuse um animal cruelty um gambling or just whatever crime that may had that may have kind of garnered a negative response from the public what you'll see immediately is the NFL team drop that player, right? They don't want any drama. They are drama ad- adverse. They're very aware of, maybe it's because of the fact that they have so many me- p- players in one team, right? There's like 36 people. So maybe, is it 36 players? I don't know. There's a lot of players in the NFL team. So maybe because there's so many players in the NFL team, they're very aware and very cognitive that if they have one bad apple on a team, he could potentially rock the whole, the whole squad, basically, right? He could um, kind of upset the whole apple cart for lack of a better term. 
So they're not very adverse to kind of, you know, riding through storms. So it wasn't that much of a surprise and um, Colin Kaepernick didn't get picked up by any NFL side. I didn't think at the time. I didn't necessarily see it as a racial thing where it could be interpreted as that. I just saw it as a thing of like NFL teams being afraid to stand by or to stand behind or to stand beside anyone and kind of, you know, say, look, no, we got him. We respect his cause. Even if it's something as noble as what he's doing, right? Because they know how it can be interpreted. They're aware of the amount of sponsors they have and the things behind the scenes. I don't know. It just didn't seem that surprising to me. But over time, the surprising thing was that he didn't sign for absolutely anybody. I thought there would be a bit of a lull, like maybe... You know, some teams will kind of, you know, want distance themselves with him. But I thought maybe as soon as the kind of, um, you know, as soon as things kind of settle down and everyone stopped getting hysterical, that maybe a team will come out of the woodwork and say, hey, you know what? We like this guy. He's better than most of our sta- uh, standby dudes. Let's get him a contract or let's give him a job. And that never happened. So that was a bit strange. But then the other strange thing that happened was that soon after that, or not soon after that, maybe a f- couple of years later, Colin Kaepernick then ends up settling with the NFL, right? I think he sued the NFL because he um, and his lawyers kind of deduced that maybe there was some sort of racial bias that came into effect in terms of him not getting a job. And I think him and his lawyer kind of sued Roger Goodell on, and the NFL um, for what they deem to be um, racism in some way, shape or form. I don't know what the exact charge was, but let's just bear with me, right? But the weird thing about it, when they, when they um, went to court, they settled and Colin Kaepernick never came out and said, the terms of his settle, settlement, right? We never heard about it. I think we heard some rumours through the grapevine. It wasn't as much as we thought it was. But we never really heard what happened. He just kind of carried on, you know, doing his whole silent protest. Not silent protest, but, you know, doing doing his kind of work that he thinks is going to be of benefit to his cause, right? Um, his sort of like, quote-unquote, actionable item to borrow a turn from Chance the Rapper. But we never really heard an explanation from why exactly he decided to do that, right? We never really got an explanation. And I think from... Again, I don't think you're, you owe anyone an explanation of, about why you're doing a certain thing. But there is something about the fact that it was such a public affair. It was such so, it was something that was played out so much in public. It was something that he intentionally did do as a public protest in order to kind of garner some attention that, you know, you might owe some of the people that are, you know, especially the Black Lives Matter people who are who are riding for him during the whole protest. You might owe them an explanation, but it never came around. So now we have we are in a situation we're in now with Jay Z now suddenly partnering up with the NFL in terms of providing them with um, entertainment um, options for the halftime show and other sort of like wider sort of like social, um, economical, racial kind of issue consultation sort of thing. A really kind of complex deal that no one really has any idea about, right? We don't really have any details on it. It's just a, something we kind of got announced. We saw Jay Z sitting down with Roger Goodell in a room full of loads of influential black kind of uh spokesper people or intellectuals or activists whatever it may be called and for the most part it seems like a good idea right it seems like you know what you want is to get a seat at the table that's all that anyone asks for right when all that blackface stuff comes out about gucci you're not i'm not screaming from the tail sides oh my god gucci you're so racist oh, la, la. it's just sad because you know for sure they don't have anyone in their entire organization who's able to recognize that that jumper might have been a bad look right so what you want is to sit at the table so you can just kind of consult and kind of lend an ear or lend a word uh, behind a brand that you feel has got a lot of its weight or a lot of its uh, prestige through, you know, specifically the buying decisions of uh, minority people. So the fact that JT did this deal, I didn't think it was a big deal, but the, the fallback, the backlash from it has been very interesting to read. And I think this goes to show just how important it is for people that are doing things to essentially put the blinders on and continue doing the the thing as opposed to just you know commentating and you know signing off about it on social media and stuff because you know he's finally one of our uh, if there's anybody within the hip-hop or black community who we'd want to sit down with the nfl and to kind of sort that mess out or to uh have some sort of influence right would be jay-z right of all the of all the people that we have within our sphere of black activists or you know, whatever it may be called, it'll be Jay Z. He's done so much work out of outside, out of mind that people aren't aware of silently, right? He's done so much work publicly, um, fighting for black issues that he should be owed some kind of grace, you think, right? Some kind of he should be given the benefit of the doubt. If any if anyone should give him the benefit of the doubt, it's probably Jay Z. But he's got none so far. And it's been strange because I think on one side you got Colin Kaepernick's side, I think, who are saying that Jay Z never spoke to them. And I Jay Z doesn't have a he doesn't need to speak to them really, to be honest, to be brutally honest. And on Jay Z's side, you've got this decision where it's like, no, like 
We've done the protesting. We've done the kneeling. We've done the whole hysterics online, right? Not hysterics, but you know, we've done all the stuff that we can do, making noise on social media. Now it's time for action. Now it's the next phase, right? And um, this kind of um, article on BBC is sort of like, again, details just how confusing this whole situation is because Colin Kaepernick's lawyer then come out and said uh, rapper Jay-Z is cold-blooded. So I'll read this article to you. It says the following. Uh, Jay's decision to partner with the NFL has been described um, as cold-blooded. Uh, Mark um, Gregeros, the lawyer of American football player Colin Kaepernick, told ABC News that the deal crosses the intellectual picket line. Jesus Christ, man. These uh, uh, these little picket lines, these, these kind of like insinuations are really, really racist. They're like, you know, you can't be just saying that about people, bro. Last week, the NFL announced that Jay-Z and his label, Rock Nation, had teamed up with the league for entertainment events and to promote social activism. Kaepernick's been in a long dispute with the NFL and doesn't have a team. The deal, the league will work with Rock Nation on its entertainment performance, such as the Super Bowl halftime show, but also to strengthen community through football and music and NFL's Inspire Change initiative. Inspire Change was created as... a uh, after discussion with players who protested the national anthem, um, a movement sparked by Colin Kaepernick, Jay-Z says the partnership is an opportunity to strengthen the fabric of the community across America, right? So, again, you've seen exactly from Colin Kaepernick's little stand, right, from his one small step that he took, because, again, I think this is good because it shows, you know, you know people say not one individual can do something. Oh, what can, what can I do as one person? It shows you can do quite a lot because look at the, look at the, um, uh, look at how the dominoes fell. As soon as Colin Kaepernick did one thing, all this other stuff happened, you know, as it continued on. Um, now Jay-Z's kind of spearheading this initiative, which sounds pretty cool for the most part. Um, the, the, the NFL said it's looking forward to making a, com- uh, a difference and driving social change. So what's the controversy? Um, there is anger because Jay-Z has teamed up with an organization that some, such as Kaepernick's girlfriend, Nessa, feel is actively keeping him unemployed. She wrote on Instagram, so really, how can Jay-Z and the NFL utter um, social justice in their partnership while keeping Colin Kaepernick unemployed because of his social justice work? Kaepernick has been without a team 2017 with allegations of team owners colluding to keep him unsigned in a lawsuit that's now been settled. And according to Mark Gregeros, both the NFL and Jay-Z did not contact Kaepernick during the discussions about the deal. The deal has already been done prior to conversation with Kaepernick that, had, that Jay-Z had and he certainly didn't have any conversation with the NFL. The lawyer said, but Jay-Z says we've moved past kneeling and I think that it's time to go into actionable items and this partnership can inspire and educate. So again, a very strange situation that I'm just not sure on what the kind of the right answer is here because on one side you've got Jay-Z wanting to take this whole social activism thing to the next level, enact some kind of change, but then you've got Colin Kaepernick saying, hey, how can you say that when I still haven't got a team? Now that isn't Jay-Z's probably level of influence, that's where it caps out. Another thing is that he has any kind of sway to um, get the team owners to hire Colin Kaepernick to come into a team. And also as a team owner, I'm not sure if it was, if this, I'm not sure how it would go, but I'm sure if someone was super liberal or super conservative and just was spewing like loads of, you know, gun, um, gun control uh, rhetoric or talking about how great Trump is and just you know being in a complete nuisance I'm pretty sure most NFL teams would uh, would still would do the same thing they did to Kaepernick and not sign the guy or you know p- maybe p- keep him away from the press whatever it may be but it, it wouldn't be welcome back with open arms because they wouldn't want any of the attention to go away from the football right you've seen what's happened with Antonio Brown right the amount of unrest he's causing in the NFL just for simply being a bit of a cock, right? Simply being a bit of an arrogant doof, right? But nothing too crazy, just, you know? He, he, he's, he very much believes in his own ability. So imagine if you're Colin Kaepernick and you've got the political angle of it, you're very confident in your own ability, you've got a girlfriend that's incredibly vocal, you're representing a minority of people who are also incredibly vocal or who, who feel very un, um, unjustly represented or unjustly treated, right? Through everything that's happened so far. It's probably a recipe for disaster, isn't it? So I'm not sure where I stand with it. But I think in general, we're going in the right direction. I think I'd like to see Colin Kaepernick back in the team again. I think that would maybe be a good way to kind of close the chapter. But I'm also a bit a bit miffed about how he never revealed the details about his settlement, which he probably isn't required to. But if you're going to do this stuff publicly, protesting in such a public world and big platform, you owe the people some kind of information about what you did with that settlement. Like what the settlement entailed, how much you received, did it mean you had to have a gag order, did it mean you couldn't say anything about what he's doing did it mean he couldn't play for another team 
I want some details. That's a bit that's a bit fishy for me. But overall, I think it's a good deal going forward for hip hop in general as well. For hip hop too, imagine we've got a hip hop representative directly involved in the NFL. Um, produce the production of the show is going to be incredible. I think we saw what Rock Nation can do in terms of production with that Meat Meal documentary that's come out. That's fucking really really good. I wouldn't be surprised that wins some awards um, or Emmys at least. Um, so hopefully, again, I'm 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 gonna be patient, just see what's gonna happen on the next cycle. I don't think you know people are talking a bit prematurely now at the moment. I don't know if anyone knows what the details are. And again, just maybe that's a, that's the whole premise of social media, right? You talk about things that you don't really know about because you know it's there and you can talk about it. That's the whole point of being on social. But it would be good if people would kind of refrain or keep their opinions to themselves just until we know what the actions are. And even if you don't know what the actions are and you're a bit dubious, I think Jay Z is owed a bit of grace he's owed the benefit of the doubt for all the good work he's done no of all people maybe he's voted i don't know i don't know anyway um let's move on uh secondly we have this great great important news for you kim kardashian fans out there she's finally decided to change the oh she finally has changed the name of her um uh solution wear or like you know spank sort of like stuff that she'd done i'm sure you guys are aware of the story prior that came out a few weeks ago was that a few weeks ago no a few months ago um, when the mayor of China or the mayor, sorry, mayor of Japan writ to Kim Kardashian and said that he would advise her not to kind of name her solution where kimono because I think there was a rumor that she tried to cherry mark kimono and kimono being the traditional dress for of Japan of Japan of Japanese culture and you know that sparked a whole conversation behind why doesn't Japan why doesn't Japan own the trademark for kimono crazy sort of things that come out right it reminds me a little bit of you know when on Spotify there's kids on Spotify who upload leaks or unlicensed music from rappers and then bag all the profits from it you know that's the thing right yeah that similar sort of thing like that it makes me kind of laugh about it but anyway um Kim Kardashian, in a weird way because i think that she done they've done really well at making sure they never res- not never respond but they don't really buckle to public pressure they just keep on doing what they're doing but i think nowadays with the scrutiny that you get on social with the idea of being with the idea of being solution where and it being something that it's going to empower women because it's going to allow them to, you know, have the illusion that they have flat, flat stomachs or smoother fires, whatever it may be called. I don't know what that kind of wear is. It would be a bit, you know, it will be a bit disingenuous. It would be a bit weird if she decided to just say, fuck it, I'm going to call it kimono wear. Um, you know, uh, be guilty of all the cultural appropriation that these people are accusing her of and just continue pushing it, right? It doesn't really need, a, doesn't need a hassle. And because and considering it's just one tiny arm of her business why just why 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 have it be problematic and just kind of get it out there as soon as you can and i'm sure it kind of uh, the money was affected in some way because she had to press pause on it so i'm assuming the amount of money that was lost in terms of promotion she's probably gonna do a big press tour that got probably got cancelled so a lot of stuff got pushed back for it but again i think that's the beauty of having you know fuck you money you can just you know okay kai it's cool i'm gonna take a break i'll come back later when you guys stop freaking out but um She's changed the name of it, and now it's called Skims. And I'm actually a fan of the name Skims. I think I prefer Skims to Kimono. I think Kimono was a name that probably sounded cool when they were discussing it around a dinner table, right, or in a design studio. But I think Skims probably, you know, again, has more of a connotation towards what they're kind of trying to do. You can kind of think about it a bit more. Sort of like Spanx, right? The whole idea that it kind of that Spanx on your body, I'm assuming. Um, that kind of makes sense in Skims, you know, similar to skin. It being a skim on top of your top on top of your skin already as it is. I don't know. I like how it sounds, how it goes about. So she made a post on social, kind of detailing that. And again, we got this whole like you know um, solution where for all people. I think I mentioned it to the brunette the other day about why anyone would want this, but I guess you know for most women, especially if you've got the problematic areas around your abdomen or on your legs. I think I saw one bit that she showed. I think I showed one solution where i saw where it was one leg right it was like a kind of split thing so if you're a lady and you went to go down a red carpet or wear a slit dress with you know one whole leg hanging out it was quite hard to do because you had to get glue you had to get different kind of panties so i guess with this you can still wear the entire thing with one sleeve on the other side so that kind of works well i'm assuming for most of it again i don't know but i like the i like the advert it reminds me of kind of you know again there's loads of yeezy influences with the pastels and the way the women just standing straight wearing heels uh, but she says the following she says my fans and followers are a huge inspiration to me and i'm always listening to their feedback and opinions and i'm so grateful that they share their ideas for uh a new brand name after much thought and consideration i'm excited to announce the launch of skim solution wear tm see <laughs> it's got trademark straight away though isn't it that's why you see that right that's where the business comes in she didn't fuck around she didn't even i'm not even gonna try she even try and say look i'm gonna wait until what you guys say it skims now um September 10th. 
I love the idea that the places that will be closest thing, the places, the pieces will be the closest thing to someone's skin, skimming with amazingly soft and supportive fabrics, which um, accu- which accentuate the best parts of our bodies. Available in sizes double X S and five XL. Skim solution wear is for everybody. Skims.com wow amazing right so that's pretty cool vanessa b croft again the lady that did loads of uh, stuff for yeezy did the pictures for that as well so a good little tie-in there and yeah all is well in the hood man after all that conundrum all that um drama with her having the name and it being so controversial now we've got a brand out there that should be able to compete and i'm actually anxious to see how this does compared to spanx because spanx is sort of the industry standard right everyone knows what spanx does and how they do things so i'm interested to see how that kind of goes about um but i think in general it should be pretty decent competition to see how that in kind of entails again it's a strange thing because you don't really men would never really wear something like that would they i don't think like um a, you know would they they probably would maybe you know it's like what guys wear those kind of muscle t-shirts they they do kind of make your body look a bit more you know stronger but oh i like the logo the logo looks awesome doesn't it right you like the logo see that that was flipping great. I like that. Let's see the what's that press? What's this? The email? Oh, the email. Um, but yeah, there's no uh, there's no sort of like pressure so many for about it. now. Just this. She's got an Instagram page for it. Let's see what that looks like. But yeah, so far so good, man. I like what it looks like. I think she smashed it in so well. Um, again, I think it's gonna be really popular with the ladies out there. They're all very excited about the idea of having something that can you know suck in some of that um non that unwanted fat and stuff but again i think i'm interested to see if a guy could do this and put this out and it'll be a, a hit I th- imagine if a guy did this with like padded a padded top that made you have pecs or that made you have a slight sort of six pack i think dudes would wear that personally again it's it's a bit you know it's a bit dubious but i think guys would wear it but again i'm a big fan of it i think it looks proper great um i like the photos um something very um 1950s i don't know what it is about it but it looks very very cool doesn't it no I fucking love it, especially with the heels. I think it looks really, really good. Um, saturated pictures, black and white, or you know, three, thirty-five millimeter film. Loads of um, loads of diverse women there on the cast again, which is something that hopefully now should just be a thing and not just be a. It should be a thing that just happens and not just like something that you wave your flag around. I think as as annoying as um as annoying as identity politics is, as annoying as some of these sort of like you know fat activists are for the most part. I think they've done a lot of good in terms of raising awareness about, you know, how difficult it must be to be a bigger woman and going into a store and having to go right to the back in order to kind of rummage through your stuff. I can get how annoying and frustration that must be. But I think now, again, for the JD conversation, the next step forward should be that as some of these brands are recognizing their mistakes, such as Nike with that, um, um, they've got the mannequin, the, the largest size mannequin they've got in the shops now. Um, they recognize their mistakes and they're trying to do different. So I think what we should do now is instead of treating these, um, shots or these um editorials as some amazing step in or kind of rating women as being brave for standing up there it's just be just be standard right there should be a girl that looks like that on the right and that on the left that should just be the way it is it shouldn't be a thing of like oh you're brave because you decide to walk down the runway in a pair of pants because you know when you're at home and you're a bigger lady you wear your underwear too right you're not you know you're not shy to wear it so let's just try and empower each other through the idea of it just being normal right it just being a standard thing it's the same sort of thing of like, you know, I'm assuming if you're a same-sex couple, you don't want people staring at you when you're kissing you. You're part in the street, right? It's just be a sta- it should just be like a standard thing. No one really cares. No one gives a shit. You guys are in love. It's none of my business. You keep it moving. Um, same way how you wouldn't stare at a heterosexual couple, right? Making out on the street. So I think this shouldn't be a big deal. We shouldn't be taking that much credit. You shouldn't be taking that much credit for what we've decided to do. I think it was a bit weird that for a while we had models only be a certain size remember the size zero thing remember there was this obsession with youth and kids that were wearing you know especially the designer stuff in milan you know wearing fendi and all those kind of brands and being you know under 21 and not being able to afford anything on that runway even at retail price right even at cost price sorry that was a bit bizarre but now we're moving forward and hopefully um we have this be just a standard thing now no one's kind of like freaking out oh my god is this um bigger size models is such a brave thing we're moving the culture forward it's like no this is how it should be this is how it should be reflected if you want to every time you go and buy something online you should, you should see yourself represented in the clothing right especially clothing wise whether it's for the models whether it's for a lookbook whether it's for people wearing it on social you should see yourself wearing it in some way shape or form that's how it just should be um so again um, check it out skims by kim kardashian oh it even says it here solution where by kim kardashian west which is i, th- I like what they're doing now by the, 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 the it's not just called a company 
I wonder what that branding thing's about, right? She does that quite often with her stuff. They say it's buy this, buy that. They don't. They don't just leave it as a skims solution. Where it's always buy. I wonder what that idea of um of doing that is all about. But hey, I think I'll figure it out later. In it, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Um. Anyway, um, that's it, really, isn't it? I think that might be a way to end the show. This action is English number two two four. A little, quick little half an hour episode. I know it's a little short one, but please excuse me whilst I get back onto my regular schedule programming. I'll be back again uh, later on this evening for an episode of the show. A nice little hour one. I know I said that last time, but this time I promise to keep to my promise. So you'll see me back on your screens or your headsets later on this evening. Until then, take care. Be safe with that malarkey. And I'll see you guys again on the other side. Peace.